The frightening thing is that the Prime Minister agrees with them. He wants to listen to Indigenous advisers because, by his own admission, he can't come up with effective solutions for them by himself. It is impossible to understate how depressing it is for the leader of Australia to think so little of our history and our current ability to solve the problem of Indigenous disadvantage. It would, it would help if the proponents of The Voice would offer some hint as to what sort of recommendations the advisory panel would make, but they don't. Instead, the Uluru Statement concludes with this invitation. We invite you to walk with us in a movement of the Australian people for a better future. Well, it might be a heartfelt invitation, but it's not a very enticing one. What does this better future look like? And how will we walk there? They don't say. Moreover, would this better future be superior to the one modern Australia could create without an Indigenous voice to Parliament? After all, our record of creating opportunity and prosperity from virtually nothing so far is exceptional. The sandy beach in Sydney Harbour, where Arthur Phillip ordered the Union Jack to be hoisted 235 years ago, is now Circular Quay, one of the busiest places in Australia, home to the stunning world-famous Opera House on one side and the equally famous bridge on the other. Ferries and ocean liners come and go from the docks and tourists and commuters mingle happily in one of the most breathtakingly beautiful urban settings in the whole world. The nation that Australians have built in that time is nothing short of remarkable. The Oxford History of the British Empire, published in 2001, says Australia was, quote, the richest society in the world between the 1860s and 1890s, unquote. We are still one of the most envied and liked countries in the world, despite what politicians such as Scott Morrison, Dan Andrews, Anastasia Palaszczuk, Mark McGowan and Michael Garner did during COVID to, to besmirch our reputation for good humour, courage and rugged resilience. The Uluru Statement makes some conciliatory noises towards modern Australia, but it is, more importantly, based on the idea that their land was stolen from them, that sovereignty was never ceded, and that dispossession has given them a, quote, torment of powerlessness. <clears throat> well, try telling that to Royston Sagigi Baira, the indigenous singer from the tiny town of Mapoon, way up on Count Cape York, who was voted by Australians on Sunday night as the winner of this year's Australian Idol. He is the latest example of an Indigenous brother or sister warmly embraced by Australians for having shown a little Aussie spirit and ambition. This is most of them. The people advocating for The Voice conveniently overlook the fact that an estimated 80% of Indigenous people never needed a constitutional advisory panel to help them achieve success or happiness in life. But worse, the advocates for The Voice misread Australian history as a deliberate attempt to steal land and in some cases commit what they call cultural genocide. 